Hi, today I'll be going over the repair and tune-up of a Blue Box Proto 2000 locomotive. Proto 2000 was a division of lifelike trains and it was a brand of high-quality HO scale locomotives and freight cars made back in the 1990s. Back in the day, these models are generally considered top of the line with numerous separately applied detail parts and a smooth ride mechanism. They were manufactured from 1989 up until Walters bought the company in around 2005. A lot of these things are still found for sale on eBay today. Um, many of them are in brand new condition. This makes these Proto 2000 locomotives a very nice purchase if you're on a budget or you don't wish to spend like 150 or 200 dollars on a locomotive. These locomotives are not perfect because some of them are over 20 years old as of 2017. Unless you buy one where the previous owner has taken well care of it, then some work will be required to get it to, to run properly. For this video, I'm going to use this Pennsylvania GP9 Phase 3. This was made sometime in the mid-90s. I'm actually not too sure, but I know this locomotive is really old, possibly even older than myself. Uh, I paid around 40 US dollars for this thing, and it was brand new when I got it. Um, you will probably find similar locomotives going for similar prices on eBay. This video won't be a complete review of the locomotive because uh, you will find plenty of other videos around on YouTube that covers the details of this thing. Uh, just two things I want to point out. Um, the cab door on the GP9 can actually be opened, which is really cool. Uh, the same thing goes for the drop step. You can raise or lower the drop step as you wish. The Blue Box Proto 2000 locomotives usually come with the shell and chassis packed separately, but in the event that your locomotive came assembled, you can take apart you can take it apart using the following steps. The first thing you want to do is remove the coupler boxes with a screwdriver. Then you want to wiggle the fuel tank off the chassis. The fuel tank is normally secured to the chassis using double-sided tape. Once you get the fuel tank off, you should be able to see the four tabs holding the shell to the chassis. Push these tabs in with a flathead screwdriver and the shell can, should come off the chassis with a little pulling. You will notice that I already did some modifications to the chassis. Uh, I have removed the old circuit board and the incandescent light bulbs on the locomotive. Uh, this is mostly because uh, we can use LEDs and also the old circuit board does not support a plug and play DCC decoder. So I hardwired a Lias DCC 4 function decoder into the locomotive with the resistors and the LEDs for the two headlight functions. This particular decoder costs uh, 12 US dollars and can be purchased from Lias DCC directly. You can use any other decoder of your choice for the DCC install. If you're running DC, then obviously you can skip the decoder install. But I still recommend adding some LEDs just because they're more, much more reliable and better looking than incandescent light bulbs. The most common issue you will find on these old Proto 2000 locomotives is that the, cracked, uh, is that the axle gears are cracked. The crack gears will make a very distinctive and audible thumping sound when you run them. Fortunately, Pro 2000 used a clone of the Atherin Blue Box drive mechanism on their models, so the crack gears can actually be replaced with Atherin part number 600024. Uh, another substitute for the gear part is A-Line part number 40005, which is what I will be using in this video. Take a small screwdriver and pry the truck covers on the locomotive loose, and then remove them. You can tell if the axle gear is cracked because the wheels can be twisted off the gear really easily if they are. Remove the broken gears from the wheels and discard them. Uh, now the A-line gear holes are actually slightly smaller than the axles of the Pro 2000 wheels. What I like to do is just open up the gears a little bit with a 2.3 millimeter drill bit. This ensures that the wheels will fit into the gears tightly, but not too tight uh, to cause frustration and damage when you install them. If you are using an American drill, the corresponding drill bit size is number 43. You can wrap a piece of microfiber cloth between your hand and the gear if you want to get a better grip and save your fingers at the same time. After the gears are drilled out, you can slide the wheels in. Uh, be sure to not lose the square-shaped wheel bearings when installing the wheels. The bearings need to sit between the gear and the wheel. Then check that the wheels are engaged using the NMRI standards gauge. 
This ensures that the locomotive will run flawlessly on all HO scale track. After that, you can drop the finished wheel set back into the truck. You can also take this opportunity to add some lubrication to the drive mechanism. As my locomotive was sitting in a box for over 20 years, I actually disassembled the entire drive and soaked it in 91% isopropyl alcohol for a day and then cleaned all of the old grease out. I then applied sewing machine oil on the bearings and the super lube Teflon grease on the gears. You can use similar lubricants such as Labelle or Hobby Lube if you wish. Keep in mind that you don't need too much lubrication on these things, uh, less lubrication is always better than more. After lubrication, I put the mechanism on the test track for a quick run, uh, checking that the drive runs smoothly without any jerks or funny noises. The mechanism of this locomotive runs very nicely, and it's, not, it's really not bad for something from over 20 years ago. After you're satisfied with the results, install the coupler, install the shell and couplers back in place, and the locomotive is ready for service. I also did similar repairs on a Conrail GP20, which is also made by Pro 2000, and here's a video of them being tested together. So as a recap, the Pro 2000 locomotive can be had on eBay for around 40 US dollars, brand new. The decoder costs 12, and the gears can be found for around 10 dollars. And we can throw in the two LEDs, the resistors, the lubrication, and a pair of KD number no. five couplers for around 5 dollars. So in the end, a nice looking high performance DCC equipped locomotive for under 70 dollars. You just have to do a little work getting it to run properly. The details are excellent and the performance rivals the more expensive stuff that you will find today in HO scale. This is a very nice budget model. You can take it to the club and run around all day or help a friend get started in the hobby by giving them a very nice reliable model to play around with. In a future video, I will be comparing my repaired Proto 2000 GP9 with a newer released Backman GP9, so stay tuned. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.